Danny Ainge has now been signed by the Utah Jazz, and he was announced as the team CEO and alternate governor, which means he's the second most powerful person in the organization behind the guy who owns it. His name is Ryan Smith, I believe. What do you think this does for Utah? Is this a big time move for Utah? Danny Ainge is somebody who he built the big three Celtics. He traded Antoine Walker, who at the time was viewed as a valuable asset. Paul Pierce wanted to get traded. Then he pulled off a trade to get Ray Allen and KG. He traded KG and Pierce to Brooklyn, and that ended up being Tatum and Jalen Brown. Arguably the greatest trade ever. He traded Isaiah Thomas after his breakout season to Cleveland for Kyrie Irving, and he's made 62 trades since 2003. 62 trades. So what does this do for the Utah Jazz? Well, you know, I, I read the um, athletic article. Basically, he st- he's going to have a lot of say, but he still has to answer to one guy. I think it's the Ryan Smith guy. He still has to answer to him. He doesn't have the final, final say, but he gets a lot of pull in there. I think this is a good direction for Utah. You know, I think we've seen them last offseason make some really good moves. You know, Hassan Whiteside was a sleeper move. Rudy Gay was a really good move. I think they've, they're still... From what I read from the article, they're still trying to get a premier wing player because we all know Utah, that's their weakest problem right now, having a premier wing. And Danny Ainge is the type of guy that can make that move. He's the type of guy, like you said, you mentioned, you you already knocked off his credentials. He has a ring. He's built championship team off top of championship team. He's built that Boston team to what it is today. You know, he's put them in strong contention to win a chip. If not win a chip, be a serious contender almost every year. So he knows how to make moves, the right moves when it's time. And he talked about it. You know, Boston, it was a 16-hour job in day-to-day, and it was, you know, it was stressing him out. But at this job, he's more free. He's more, you know, open. So I think this job will be a little bit more fun. And they're they're building a solid team out there in Utah, you know. So I think this is a good move. This is somebody who could definitely bring in another guy that can maybe be that third star for Donovan Mitchell and Gobert. You know, they have guys who have big cap, so maybe, you know, they can make a move, pull the trigger, and they can get that wing that really puts them over the top. But Danny H is definitely the guy to do it. Would you trade Bogey to, to get that? Yes. I mean, this team... If it's the right guy, yeah. yeah this yeah. team currently is the best team that, that has been surrounded by Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. This is the best jazz team with the core of Mitchell and Gobert. Better than last year's, for sure. Yeah, for okay. sure, yeah. Rudy Gay, yep, Hassan yep, Whiteside, yep. those additions are huge. The last year's team was really good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm asking. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Joe Ingles traded. I think Bogdanovich and Joe Ingles are the two guys, for me, that are most likely going to be on the move to try and get a premier player that can help Utah get over the hump. And I think this move was a great move. Danny Inge is somebody who knows how to get over the hump. He's a tough negotiator. Sometimes that comes back to yeah. bite him because he doesn't want to give he up these AD. assets. He could have had AD, but, you know, those were all risks. Same thing with Kawhi. Probably could have had Kawhi, but if you're getting Kawhi, you're only getting him for that season. If Toronto loses that chip, that was a major fail for them. And now you traded a guy who was a top 25 player in Jalen Brown. So th- they, that was that was a huge that was a huge risk. AD. Yeah, they needed to trade it. Uh, I remember one day they had, they had cap to get KD, too. They was in Boston. Yeah, that, that was the year that Katie went to mm-hmm. Golden State, and they had a chance to get LeBron. Well, they had cap to get LeBron and one he time. Never would have gone there, yeah, of course not. But I think the Jazz are a couple more pieces away. Not even pieces. I think they're a piece or two away. And I think Danny Ainge is the person that can make a trade to get them to where they want give to get me, to, which is me, the championship. Shoot me like I don't want to say like shoot me like a star type of player in the league that will put them over, like a wing. Like not saying this is a guy they can get, but like this type of player. I really don't have one off the top of my head. You're saying wing is tough. You were going to say Sabonis? No, no, no. Oh, God. Bradley Beal? No. He's but Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell's there. But Donovan Mitchell's better. He, yeah. I mean, like, like but they you need wouldn't a bring wing. him in. They but need you a wouldn't wing. bring in Bradley Beal? What about a no. Jalen Brown? Yeah. Do they need that? They're not no, I'm saying, would they Celtics. need, like, that type of player or maybe a little bit lower? I don't think they need that type of player. I think they need... Andrew Wiggins. Okay. I think an Andrew oh, Wiggins like can that. put them in like, okay, you're legit. They're legit right now, but I think an Andrew Wiggins That's gives fair. them the defense like that Wiggins they need now. on the perimeter. You yeah. said per- premier. That's why my mind immediately Andrew Wiggins went. They don't need, a, they don't need a superstar, all-star okay. player. Okay. They just need somebody who can guard on the perimeter, hit open shots, and occasionally create their own basket. They play defense. That is, yeah. 
So I'm only sleeping on them as a contender if they don't make any moves. But like you said, Danny Ainge has has a track record of just being very, very aggressive in the market. He wants to make that move to put his team over the top. So then I'm going to wait until I see that move happen before I change my stance on Utah. going to be very consistent. Until I see it done in the playoffs, I'm sleeping. I know that Utah is a great team in the regular season. One of the best teams in the NBA in the regular season. I need to see it come playoff time. And until they make that move that really locks them up on all aspects of the game, I'm not ready to say that they're the contender. Where do you rank them in the West? I probably would have them in that 3-4 category. Are they better than the Lakers? Right now, probably. But come playoff time, I'm taking us. Of course you are. (laughs) (laughs) You took them over Phoenix, too. Um, Who? Lakers? Yeah. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I think Utah can beat Phoenix. Me, too. I don't think so. I think that's the favorable matchup for them, in my opinion. But how so? The Golden State goes small, and they're the Uh, most dangerous small ball team in the league. But we just said the Suns and and Utah. That's what we're talking about. No, I'm saying I think think that's their most favorable matchup if they play Phoenix. I disagree. Because you're saying their their weakness is wings. One of the Suns' strengths... Is their but wing they players? Also play, the wing players aren't anything. But they're Mikhail, Mikhail Bridges, but, Jay Crowder, but Phoenix Cam is gonna Johnson. Play the Utah Bro, strength, you, so they'll you be realize able to use what you a lot more. You realize what you just Wait, named? What did you well, name? I said Mikhail. We're talking wing players: Mikhail Bridges, Jay Crowder, and Cam Johnson. We could have stopped at Bridges. I'm not even gonna lie. Mikhael to Bridges is a three and D player. He's an excellent perimeter defender. Correct. But he's not somebody who they need puts guard. fear in my heart as I'm, a as, as a, a defender. defender. No, no. no. Listen, the reason, why, the reason why that's no, wrong as, I mean, as me defending him. Yeah, Bridges is oh, fear. Oh, him. Okay, okay, okay. The Bro. reason why that matchup is because Bridges isn't a Kawhi. He isn't a Paul George. He's not a LeBron. You're that's why. Like it's, that's why Utah but struggles all, because those they guys, don't have. Rose Lane can't guard them. He can guard Bridges. I'm not worried about the offense for the Suns. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and A. And have that covered, and the fact that Mikael, Jay Crowder, and Cam can hit their outside jumpers. That's, all you need them to do is clamp up on defense, that's and why they will. You, that's why that's a favorable matchup. Because what killed Utah is the fact that teams go small and they they couldn't guard on the wing. The, Bridges is a spot up shooter right now. He don't, you don't have to put uh, have an elite guy guard him. Your, your backcourt yep, yep. is going to go match up with their backcourt, and Rudy Gobert is going to go guard DeAndre Ayton. That's a favorable matchup in terms of you play the Lakers. Now you have to guard LeBron. But I feel AD. like they're exactly the same team, except the Suns team. The Suns wings are better. Bog, Bogey is um, Bo, ah, Bogdanovich is better than Cameron Johnson and Jay Crowder. Yes, Joe Ingles is better than Cameron Johnson, and he's probably on the same level as Jane Crowder. Jordan Clarkson is better than anybody on the Suns bench. That's literally their favorable match. And now they the, the Jazz do have a small ball lineup because Rudy Gay is there now. Like that, like I don't know what you're talking about, Phoenix. I mean, come on, the Phoenix have five losses this season. I think. Four oh no, actually. no, they're, they're, listen, they're legit, but I think Utah, Utah wants that. That's the best matchup can, for them. Utah can beat Phoenix. I think that's a seven game series, though. They can beat them. Though. So then, who you Utah can't beat? The Warriors are the only team. That's the saying. only team that I'm like. Uh, that's a I'm bad picking matchup. For it them. is. It is. I mean, I, Warriors are my team to make it out the West. I just think the Suns are better. I personally, personally even think you guys are a bad matchup. I think if they're you're better healthy, coached I think well. you guys are a bad matchup for them too. I do. I think that, that as well. Like I think teams, like teams that but go small. That's why I said come come playoff time. I'm taking the Lakers. 